everybody to the Hemlock and Wounded Adult Disease Monitoring Workshop. My name is Todd Bittner and I'm the Natural Areas Director here at Cornell Plantations. And uh, we certainly uh, are excited to have such a good turnout for this um, important and, uh, and, and uh, concerning issue that we're meeting here about today. So presentation by Mark Woodmore, who's uh, faculty uh, and uh, a cooperative extension uh, here with uh, Cornell University. Uh, entomologist that's worked on indulgids, uh, uh, balsam uh, woolly indulgid, and now hemlock woolly indulgid. And uh, so we're very fortunate to have such great expertise here at Cornell in dealing with this newest threat that we have. So uh, Mark is going to give a, a, a presentation, uh, provide an introduction, overview uh, about um, you know the the uh, this newest pest, and, as well as um, uh, you know kind of where things stand today. And then we're going to switch gears and. Um, talk about how what we want to accomplish and what our short-term goals are in terms of, of getting uh, uh, eyes out in the field and identifying sources of uh, of hemlock woolly uh, uh populations. And uh, and then after that's taken care of, we're going to go out in the field uh, to BB Lake uh, Natural Area right here on campus and look at uh, some of the uh, uh, sites that are infested so you can get a first-hand appreciation of, of what it is that we're actually targeting to look for out, uh, out in our hemlocks. And, uh, Thanks. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is really cool to see such great response. Um, really, uh, it makes me feel really happy because um, it's been pretty depressing recently being a forest entomologist uh, in the Northeast. Um, and I've been doing this almost 30 years now, and uh, the bugs we're about to see are some of the worst, I think, that I've ever, in my experience, encountered. I come from the West Coast, and uh, I cut my teeth working on bark beetles in pine forests and spruce forests in the north. And, you know, there's thousands of acres of deforestation there, but they're native bugs, and there's a native predator complex, and it's a natural cycle, actually, that those forests go through albeit exacerbated perhaps by global warming. We'll, we'll see right now it's, the research is focusing on that. What we're dealing with here is something quite different though. We're dealing with uh, bugs that have actually been imported from, uh, uh, in this case from Japan and from around the world. Now with commerce in, increasing, uh, it's more and more introductions are made. And we'll get introductions, but establishment is, is the real tough thing. When it becomes established, then you got a problem. There's, you know, we get bugs all the time in containers, but when you get them established, it's really bad. The hemlock woolly adelgid uh, is one of those. We also have on the way, it's not if it gets here, but when it gets here, is the emerald ash borer. And I'm going to do a little bit on that later on. I have some actually some demonstration materials. And then the real scary one, that eats all the ash trees. The really scary one that we're looking at is the Asian longhorn borer and that goes after the maples. And right now, it's a 64 square mile uh, quarantine in Worcester that uh, my fingers and toes are crossed that it doesn't get out of. And uh, right now, the feds are investing a lot of money, millions of dollars, trying to, and trying to eradicate it. But um, like I say, my fingers and toes are crossed. They have, <coughs> it gets out. They have that downstate New York. It's also in Staten Island and, and in uh, uh, Jersey and Long Island. But the big difference yeah. there is that that's an urban situation. It's easy to quarantine on street trees or whatever. In Worcester, it's adjacent to a wild forest. And if it gets loose in that wild forest, it's, it's a whole other ballgame. We've never seen it before. But let's focus on this. This is here now. Um, <coughs> there are other adelgids that are in America. Indeed, uh, the hemlock woolly adelgid is uh, naturalized on the West Coast. This is a very heavy infestation taken right over uh, on Cayuga Lake. You can see these are the adults, or the, the larvae gradually becoming adults. They'll lay their eggs within those sacs. That's basically all you will see. It's a waxy, hairy, cottony thing covering this insect. Um, what they do is, is they, uh, they settle, and then they stay in that one place throughout its whole life. It won't move. So right now, if you were to carry this, uh, cut off a branch and carry it around, if they fell off, they wouldn't infest anything. They would just die. Um, it's only when they start growing. I'll get into the life cycle a little bit. This is the current distribution. Um, it was introduced uh, near Richmond 
1951, it sort of stayed there and did really wasn't really noticeable for until the mid 70s, and then it started going crazy, getting into the Appalachian Mountains. And now I'll show you some pictures. It's really been a big problem in Great Smoky National Park and all throughout the Appalachians, and it's moved up into uh, New England, through Jersey, and Pennsylvania, where it's actually where it's causing a great deal of mortality. Um, and indeed, uh, in the national park, it's it's been such a problem that they're really they're treating areas uh, with pesticides to try and preserve uh, the genetic resources. This is our distribution right now in the Finger Lakes, as far as we know it. Uh, there have been three or four finds just in the past couple of weeks, and or last month, I should say. Um, and this was all done uh, last summer by a DEC uh, biologist who just traveled around in her car and wherever she could find hemlock trees next to the lakes, she would take a look at them. Um, so most of them you can see are indeed adjacent to the lakes, in the gorges, and adjacent to homes that are also right on the lakes. And I think that's a very significant aspect of the distribution at this time because I feel it's quite likely the uh, biggest source of hemlock oleodelgids into the area is with uh, uh, nursery stock coming in, like nursery trees from New Jersey being planted up here. Um, so what is the problem? The okay, was first found in 1951 in Richmond. It spread drastically. DNA says it's from Japan. Uh, my question is, are all these from Japan? We don't know. The DNA work is yet to be done from here. I still have to collect a few bugs and send them off to the Forest Service lab. Um, the it's one of the really important aspects of biology is that it is parthenogenetic, or they're all females, basically. Um, no males. And so all reproduction is asexual. They don't need to have all that complicated mating ritual stuff. It's like basically one individual settles on the tree, boom, it starts pumping out eggs, and the reproduction is just absolutely phenomenal. Here you see. There are two generations a year on hemlock here, up to 300 eggs per female, so if you just take a general figure, 200, twice makes 40,000 individuals from one individual at the beginning of the year. That's an explosive reproductive potential, and that's why this is such a big pest. Um, and it's interesting, it's one of the few bugs that's really active, it actively grows all throughout the wintertime. All the other bugs are off, you know, hiding and stuff, and that's a good way to avoid predation. Uh, the natural enemies are largely lacking for this insect on the East Coast. There are native uh, uh, delgids on white pine, and they're looking at having the uh, looking at, at adapting that to the hemlock oleodelgid. But right now, uh, that's just in the early stages. Uh, the hemlock 